Hi everyone! I've been planning on releasing all kinds of tips and tricks videos the past few weeks. But since the game at the moment when this video is recorded is still patched constantly, I'm going to have to wait for a bit before I release any heavier guides, since everything is still subject to change. However, at this point I can bring you 12 basic tips for Dark Souls 2 PvP. If you are already experienced PvP player, this video will probably not provide you with too much new information, so don't say I didn't warn you. Ok, let's get started. Stamina management is one of the most important things in Dark Souls 2 PvP. In Dark Souls 1, managing stamina was in quite a big role too. But a common habit for most of the players was back then to use green blossoms to avoid running out of stamina. In Dark Souls 2, running out of stamina is a lot more dangerous due to the card break repost that can be activated also on an opponent who runs out of stamina when getting hit. Running also seems to deplete stamina a lot faster than in the first game, and wearing heavy armor or having your shield erected affects stamina regain speed significantly. My rule of thumb for the stamina management would be to never ever deplete your whole stamina bar, not even if you get your enemy into stun lock. You should always aim to save up stamina for rolling away from unexpected situations. I know that sometimes it's easy to get caught in the moment and not preserve the stamina, but just by keeping in mind that you might need that small amount of stamina has helped me out of tight situations more than once. If you're feeling that you run out of stamina more often than you would like to, try using green blossoms as self buff or items that boost stamina regeneration, like Chloranthe Ring, Slumbering Dragon Shield or Blossom Kite Shield. One of the things that got a huge buff compared to the first game is throwable items. There is a huge variety of different throwable items that are very useful. The best thing about these items is that every single build can use them as ranged attack option. For just about any build it's very useful to have that ranged attack option available. Maybe supporting your poison or bleed builds with poison or bleed throwing knives, or to deal that last chip damage against the opponent who runs away. I myself like to use throwable items like fire bombs to force my opponent to move into wanted direction or catching them in the middle of their roll by unlocking the target lock and manually throwing the bomb in front of me as they try to roll through of the bomb they think is going to fly past them. One important thing to note about throwing items is also the fact that those don't use stamina at all. So if you find yourself in a situation where you realize your stamina will run out and your opponent is coming aggressively towards you. A well-placed throwing item might just save you some time to regenerate your stamina. This one is pretty basic, but I cannot emphasize enough how good backstepping is in Dark Souls 2. In Dark Souls 2, backstepping is way more viable than it was on Dark Souls 1 and has very satisfying iframes that are somewhat also tied to your adaptability. You can use backsteps to get out from the way of attacks fast and still be able to counter attacks faster than if you would have rolled instead. There is also quite a long time you can trigger the backstep follow-up attack, so there is room for tactical timing in there if your opponent is going for parries for example. A good thing to keep in mind is also the fact that you can backstep with your shield raised for maximum safety. Another attack that came quite a bit more useful compared to Dark Souls 1 is jump attacks. I see no reason not to implement jump attacks to your offensive arsenal. Those deal a ton of damage to HP and stamina and have devastatingly amazing tracking. As far as I know, jump attacks cannot be parried either. Only downside to jump attacks is that you need to be careful about not being backstab punished for failed attempt. But as long as you time them well, you should be able to get out in time. 
The key is to implement those with other attacks and not to become predictable with it. Playing with the target lock isn't as limiting in Dark Souls 2 than it was on Dark Souls 1, but there is still plenty of reason to experiment with the unlocked play. When you play unlock you can position your character faster and have more accuracy in certain situations, where poor tracking can mess up a hit that should have landed. For example, when locked onto your opponent, trusting weapons like spears and rapiers can have problems with the tracking if your opponent is coming in from the side. By releasing the target lock and manually aiming the attacks to the direction you want to attack usually results in better success. Picking a right shield for your playstyle can be a very important decision all the way from weight to damage reduction to parry animation. With right infusion, a certain shield you can block just about any spell without a scratch. So if you're having problems against those mages, try and equip a shield with high elemental defenses, like magic shield or transgressor's letter shield for example, and infuse those appropriately to guard yourself from spells. Poison can be very nasty in this game and can deal some scary amount of damage in a matter of seconds. So every build should carry around poison moss to avoid quick deaths. Well timed use of poison moss is also recommended against powerful tracking poison spells like dark fog. By using the poison moss exactly the moment you see your opponent casting poison cloud on you prevents the poison build up for a good 2 seconds, enabling you to escape unharmed. I apologize for not having a true combat example clip of this, but I tried to demonstrate the short poison immunity by poisoning and healing myself in this poison pool. It's good to remember that some weapons in the game have quite strict sweet spots. Meaning that you have to land a successful hit with a certain part of your weapon to deal any satisfying damage to your enemy. A good example of the weapons that have very strict sweet spots is the Reapers, which have the sweet spot in the blade part of the weapon. So if you're planning on using weapons like Great Sight or Sight of One for example, prepare to learn how to land those successful hits with the sweet spots or you are left with quite underwhelming damage output. Guardbreak attack is a new mechanic introduced in Dark Souls 2. This attack is very helpful against people who like to hide behind their shields, and since guardbreak attacks often land massive damage when successful, I would advise everyone to also be careful about your blocking. To land card breaks more easily, I would suggest mixing it with other attacks. I personally land the card break most often when I do card break attack right after I have landed one normal attack to the opponent's shield. Probably because of the small hit stun blocking causes. This also prevents possible setup parry attempts. Just to be clear, card break attacks cannot be parried. Backstabbing was a very powerful tool in Dark Souls 1 and remains very dangerous in Dark Souls 2 as well, although it's a bit different. In Dark Souls 1 backstab was activated on the first frame, but in Dark Souls 2 you have to go through a small animation in order to land a successful backstab. If you fail a backstab attempt it results in a whiff animation, which makes backstabbing a bit more risky than it was on Dark Souls 1. 
Backstabs are most effective when used as a punish when your opponent does a careless attack or maneuver, so you have more time to get a successful backstab animation through, most commonly done by roll backstabbing. Circling your opponent lockdown and hoping to get a backstab is often a bad idea because of the target lock tracking of your opponent, and it's not recommended. If you're gonna do it, better do it by running around your opponent without target lock. There is also a way to catch your opponent at the end of their escape roll, to land a backstab. And you can check out the link on the screen and visit the expert on the matter, Spades, for more detailed info on how to time and perform that particular backstab. By observing that video, you can also learn how to defend against it. One useful way being the backstepping I mentioned earlier. Spades also shares other useful tips on his video, so I strongly suggest checking it out. When doing PvP, you're bound to get stunlocked, but the amount of time and the hits you will take can differ depending on your reaction. The common mistake many players do when they get hit stunned is to try and rebel by attacking. This will get you in trouble and only lengthens the time you are being to stunlocked. So always when you get stunned, attempt to roll away, even mash the roll button if necessary the very instant you get stunned. But do not try to rebel with the attack of your own. This will only get you stunlocked even harder on most cases. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm... Parrying is a devastating mechanic that can bring a lot of mind games to the table when you get the timings down. I could tell you more about parrying here. But I have happened to made a very detailed guide on the mechanic. So if you're interested in how to parry against different weapons, when to do it and with what parrying tools, check out the guide and your questions will be answered. So those were my 12 basic tips for Dark Souls 2 PvP. Hopefully some of you out there found this video useful, and I will deliver more specific guides on different tips and tricks in the future. You can share your own handy tips and tricks in the comments section. I will leave you with a clip where I use most of the things I mentioned on this video in a single fight. See you in Drang Lake. Take care.